Safety pins have been around since 1849, and they were invented by Walter Hunt. Uh, he was actually doing it because he owed a friend of his 15 bucks. He sold the patent to W.R. Grayson Company for $400, paid off his friend, kept the $385 for himself. R.W. Grayson Company went to make millions of dollars on the safety pin. It's a very simple item. I mean, there's so many uses for it in every day, but there are also some unusual uses, and it's really great to have some of these set aside for your preps, for your bug out bag, just as an EDC item. And we're going to look at a ton of different ideas about how to use the safety pin. Because one of the things that I go by is you've got to improvise to survive. And hopefully this will give you some ideas and inspire you to keep some safety pins handy. Now while the traditional safety pin looks something like this, it just locks into this little uh, piece of the metal that kind of slips over. Very thin, makes it really easy. Either way, you can attach this. And these have been just used again for over 170 years but there are a lot of different types and this isn't all of them this is just a number of different ones that i found uh, and then of course we have some black different ones in different sizes uh, you can get assortment packs uh, here are some world war ii pens uh, these were pretty cool they're made of brass they're very strong and they have this little plate and i'm sure this plate could actually be bent over uh, then we have a whole different style without the cover and this just is really simple to use uh, it can come out a little easier and so that is one thing to be careful of and there are different sizes and different colors here's another different colors kind of a bronze finish and these are actually antique and we have very large safety pins I mean these things are huge and they're very capable uh, but if you're wanting something very small you know, you could go with the smaller ones, but honestly, this gives you a whole nother dynamic. I mean, this is a large piece right here. Uh, this could be used as an awl, as a scribe, I mean, a number of different things. And it's just very large, and yet, you know, it's fairly lightweight. And then we have this very unusual pattern. It has a larger bottom, and it comes out, uh, functions again, just like the regular safety pin, but it has more of a bulb kind of thing at the end. And, of course, you can use this, and there are different sizes. Now, small rips can appear, especially getting caught on a limb or just cutting it in different ways. This will get bigger if you don't cinch this up. So I'm taking some really small safety pins here. We're just going to close this up, help to keep this from continuing to rip. Now, when you get home, you know, you can sew it up. But uh, in the meantime, just having some of these just helps to keep this together. And I would probably add about three or four. It's one of my favorite shirts though, and I hate this little rip, but it needs to be protected. And it really doesn't have to be completely sewn, just enough to keep the tear from getting larger. So while this is a little strange, unless you're a punk rocker and you like to have <laughs> this as decoration, this is gonna give you at least, gonna keep this together, keep it from ripping even more. Now sometime in our life, we've had a hoodie or some kind of jacket and the drawstring has come out. And it's a lot of trouble to put this thing back in and to hold on to it, you know, as you go up through this little channel that goes all the way up. So I like to take a fairly large safety pin, take the end, just get a good pull through on it. And now what I can do is, is I put this in here. I can feel that safety pin and I can just pull it through. Just make sure it doesn't pop out <laughs> like it just did. Then here as you get to the end, it'll come through. Just pull this out, pull your string out, release your safety pin, then tie a really good knot on here to keep it from going up. Uh, sometimes I have some with grommets and they hold it very well, but a lot of times, especially if it's just cloth like this, they can pull through. So now, got it back in order. And honestly, that was really easy to do. Now let's say you have keys, maybe your keychain or something broke and you need to have these keys in order or you just don't have something and you have a lot of keys laying around. Obviously take these, run them down the point,
lock that down and now you've got your keys right here and you can even hang that up uh, where you keep your keys but just a temporary or if you like it you can use this all the time and it makes it really easy <laughs> to take those keys off or you can go with the dumb split ring and you can fight this the whole time <laughs> Guys, there have been times where I found my pack, my zippers come loose. I mean, this has some really nice paracord pulls, and it's really nice to have that extra to be able to pull it. But when it's like this, it's a lot of trouble to get that open. And so take a safety pin, and you can take whatever size works best, pop it through, and now you have a filled expedient zipper. Then when you get home and you find your cord, Sometimes it's a real pain to get this through here. It just doesn't want to quite go through. Once you get it just kind of started in there, you can take your safety pin. Now you've got it coming out. I'm gonna tell you guys, I don't think I could have gotten it without that safety pin. Take your little keeper, put it back on. Make sure it locks down, and now I have my original. Now zippers sometimes can break, and they can come undone, just like this. It really causes a lot of problems, and you can't keep your jacket closed. Take your safety pin, run it through, and attach it to the other side. And now, if you have multiple safety pins, you can actually go straight up. Now, one thing a safety pin can do is give you some security for your pack. Sometimes people can just reach in a pack. They don't want to take the entire pack, but they just want to get in it while you're not looking. And so if you have double zippers, you can take and put a just a safety pin through there. And now, there's no way they can quickly just open it. If they pull one zipper, the other zipper follows. So this is just a little bit of a security feature, especially if you're in a very crowded area. Uh, and of course, definitely with a backpack. Most of your backpacks have a lot of molly attachments. They have loops, they have D-rings, they have shock cord. I mean, there's a lot of ways to attach gear onto your packs. But let's say you just have a small pack that you, you know, have some essentials in here that you want to be able to get to quickly. Your pack's full and you want to just put something on there. Again, just to get to it really fast. Now this one just happens to have a little loop on it and uh, you can just slip it through. Of course, we can put it on this little kind of a unusual d-ring uh, but it'll go in different places even on the molly attachments so having some kind of uh, safety pin really helps to be able just to put this anywhere and then of course obviously you could take the pin and just run it through your pack if you had to or through the zipper i mean there's different places but that way it's not attached to your pack and then if you want to get to it you know you can just pop the safety pin open take it right off and then you can get to it uh, and it makes it really easy. But of course, obviously, there's a lot of different things that you can do just attaching different items with a small little safety pin. Of course, this is actually one of the larger safety pins, so I recommend having a multitude of different sizes. Uh, they're very small, they're easy to just put away, and so you can have these packed up, use the small ones when you need them, because sometimes the small ones are what you need, and then have the larger ones for other things. And guys, even though this has molly attachments all over it, and we have molly attachments, we don't have any way to be able to attach this unless we have some of the molly that comes through that you can attach these. So I really like to have some of these real larger safety pins. I mean, this is a great little tool in itself, and I can just put it through the handle, and again, put it here, lock it down. This is much more secure. Now it's gonna swing around, and if you want to, you could actually attach it to another place right here to keep it stable but this way you know you've got these bigger safety pins there's a lot you can do even putting a water bottle with a small handle on it you could put that on the outside of your pack now if you wanted to be able to identify let's say people in your group and you wanted to have just some kind of marker we have a little bit of ribbon here that's just bright yellow and so i can attach this to this pack very simply now you may say well why don't you just tie it on but it's a small piece and if you tie it on you're going to have that much less visibility uh, also one thing that you could use this ribbon for is marking your trail so as you're going along cut small pieces 
take the safety pin, attach it to limbs, small limbs, and you can attach it that way. So it gives it a little bit of stability. So it marks your trail, but also it can identify those that are in your group. Of course, if you're in more of a discreet kind of way, you may want to go with a different color. Flip-flops, typically, uh, they'll come through at the bottom, at least on inexpensive flip-flops. And this holds the strap to the shoe. Here, if this happens to break, it's going to pull right out, and there's no way you can wear it once this happens. So you can take a safety pin, run your safety pin through the strap, just like that. Now, you're going to secure it to the bottom. And don't worry, it's not going to ruin your look because it's underneath the flip-flop. But honestly, if you're wearing these cheap flip-flops, you don't have to worry about it ruining your look. <laughs> these things are a quarter at Walmart. Also, you can bend it out and you can use this as a scribe. That way we can mark the metal. And especially if you don't have like a Sharpie and you don't want to use your knife on steel, you can also use this to scribe into wood. Uh, maybe you're on the trail and you want to leave a message and you can use this. Obviously, you can use your knife as well but this is just one of those handy things. There's a lot of different things you can mark and be able to let people know that, you know, you've been this way. When it comes to fish hooks, they just tend to bunch up like this, and sometimes it's difficult to pull one out. Pull out your safety pin. Place each hook right through it. Once you get your hooks on, close it up. Now look at this, everything's lined up. It's really easy to pull one off at a time and it keeps you from sticking your hands down in those hooks. And guys, you can do all your assorted hooks. It makes it really easy to be able to take on and off and it keeps you from getting your fingers stuck and fighting all those little hooks. Now with fishing lures, you have the hook that's attached to an O-ring to the ring that's on the lure. Uh, this can come off, especially if you get something hung up, and you'll pull your hook off. Take your safety pin, and you'll have a natural O-ring right here at the back, or what they call a split ring. And since this is steel, this is really going to hold up well, and it's spring steel. So just take some cutters, just cut that tip off, get it as close as you can. And now we have a small little split ring. Guys, here you can use these split rings for a lot of different things. I mean, it definitely goes well with the fishing, but also with even jewelry repair, different things you want to put this on. Uh, it is a little bit tight, and so you're going to have to expand it out just a little bit to get it over both the hook and that little ring. But you can do that with a small little screwdriver or a little pair of pliers. Now, I've opened up this split ring some to be able to get it over the hook on the lure and then this the regular try hook so first we want to put it on the lure and then we want to get it on the hook now there is a gap here so we want to close that so we can take our pliers and just close it down there'll still be a little bit of a gap but it's really difficult to get over it, so I think we're good to go. So here we go. Now our fishing lure is back in working order. But again, these little jump rings, there's a lot of things you can do with that. And of course, you can make bigger ones as well. Now you can make a hook uh, out of a safety pin, and the larger the pin, the bigger the hook. One of the problems you're going to have, though, is with this straight tip, a hook typically has this little barb on it. And you're not going to have that. So if you're using this as an improvised hook, uh, you're going to have to make sure you keep pressure on the fish. And some are just going to get away. So first thing we want to do is just cut off this excess. And then just slowly bend in the pointed part. And that's going to be your hook. You probably want to get it to where it kind of feeds in a little bit. So if you do, it makes it more difficult for that fish to get this off. 
So here we have an improvised hook. You can attach your line, sinkers, whatever, and just put on your worm. Now safety pins can also be used to close up a wound. And of course you want to be really careful with this. You want to make sure these are sterilized even by heat or by alcohol. So let's say you have a laceration and you know it's pretty deep. You're somewhere where it really needs to get this closed up. And so you want to go back from the cut itself and then bring it up and then come out on the other side. And you want it really as tight as you can get it because you don't want that to stretch. And obviously the meat that I'm using is a little bit thick, but so is skin. And so you want to do this as many times as you need to to be able to get that wound closed especially if you can't get the bleeding to stop. Now I'm not a medical professional but in dire straits you've got to do some pretty crazy stuff. Especially if there's no medical attention anywhere near. Just be careful not to cut yourself. But you can use as many of these as you want and you're just able to get this closed up and so again you want to get it back from the meat and then to be able, and I say meat, this is a piece of meat, but you want to get it back from the wound so you can get that skin and bring it together. But real world, I'm going to feed this to my dogs, even though this looks a little bit like my pug. <laughs> also, you can take the tip. If you have a splinter in your hand, you can be able to get to that tip and pull that splinter out, at least dig it out. It gives you something that has a sharp point, and you know it really will help, especially, of course, out in the woods, splinters are plentiful. Uh, also, if you get a tick, which I don't have any ticks handy, but uh, you can actually remove a tick also with this small little tip. Now, if you need to hem up your pants, you can just roll them up, uh, and that works okay. But sometimes, you know, if, especially if you're in the field, you're catching on things, you can pull it down. And so this is a, just a way to hem up your pants. So you can bring them in. Take your safety pin. Now, you can put this on the inside or the outside. It's according to, you know, if you want to have that look or not. And just take it, run it through. And it's going to hold. And you can do that about three or four sides. And this should hem up your pants, a shirt, whatever you have. And again, you can go from the outside to where all that's showing is just this little small piece. So that makes it really easy. Now there are times where I have glue, and sometimes... You know the ends get stuck and you just don't get any glue and so you need to clean that out and that's one thing that you can do with a safety pin of course open it up put it through and just clean out that really hard resin that's in there and sometimes it can take a little bit of time to get it out because this stuff is rough especially Gorilla Glue here you can even open up the end and push through this way and just work that glue through. Because once you get a small pinhole, you can start to get this glue out. And you can see the dried glue that we're already getting out of here. Sometimes working it from both angles just helps it to work. There we go. Now, see this glue? <laughs> and now we're able to use this glue without just pulling off the cap. Uh, one thing I've resorted to is just go to the point where I just take this and use the glue straight out of it and it makes a big mess so this really helps because this glue definitely just hardens. Now pours out perfectly. All right, I'm not really sure what I'm going <laughs> to glue with this. Come here let me put this on your face. <laughs> and guys this glue clogged up even with this little pin that comes with it to help you to do it. So guys there's a lot of different things you can do with this again improvise to survive. I highly recommend getting an assortment of different sizes because the more capability you have the better you are. They're lightweight, they're easy to carry, you can stick them aside and because they're safety pins you don't have to worry about them coming open. And down in the comments you know if you have some other ideas please leave them. Uh, it always helps the community to be able to see all different ideas and together we make a better team. So the simple safety pin, it can be used in a multitude of different ways, not only just the normal ways with holding a diaper to a baby or using it for sewing or, you know, even when you buy clothes and it has a tag attached to it. 
Uh, these are very simple items and yet they are very useful. And in a survival situation, this could really come in handy. Plus, they're pretty cheap. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. The simple safety pin. Um, these have been used for over a hundred, I don't know how long they've been used. Now small rips can appear in your clothes, especially when you're in the, okay, little, 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 little. And of course I could attach it to any of these different places, but it just hangs right there and that don't look good. Now to me, if I have glue that I haven't used in a while and it gets, you know, some in, oh, okay, 